Okay, so um, I'm going to start this video by from scratch where we s uh, first create a MySQL database, an RDS um, in AWS. So you come into the very beginning screen. What you'll see is um, something like this. Let me just go back actually. Let's make it exactly like what you will see. So you log into AWS, you will see this kind of stuff. So sometimes it will look like this. Sometimes you can get to it from here as well, but that bit has a, your um, <coughs> default sort of history. So you go to RDS and then you can go into create database here or you can go into here and then I've already created this one here. This DB identifier is actually the really the name of your instance really. So what I'm going to do is pretend that I'm going to create one here. Create this and create a standard one. Change this here to MySQL. And then keep this here as change this for two. 7.26, 5726, 5.7.26, and then change this to the free tier. And this is, if you don't change it to this version, then some things don't work later on. And then, okay, you can change this to the name, that's the default one, it could be one or two, yeah, before it was just one. So um, that's what I did. And then you just put in a username and a password here, and that's what I've done for this. And confirm your password. DB instance, so just keep everything as it is here. Default, default, default storage. And enable auto scaling, everything. Availability, durability, connectivity, all these things just um, keep it as default but then this one here make it public access that's one you, that's something you have to do change that to public access and then zone availability no preferences choose existing create new and then here also just create a new one here put in a name and then that will just make your name if that's that's if you're starting from scratch password authentication as well make sure you have this database authentication and then additional configuration here come into here actually that's not the thing it is actually just in database authentication Additional configuration. That's there. What else is there? That needs to be done. Nope, I think that is pretty much it. Additional. Choose existing. everything like this so that's let me just have a double check of this initial database name info nope that's fine everything is fine and then you come down here and click create database then what you should get is this screen here And then this is going to be your database. And then after a while, um, it will start. It will you will get this availability because it will start doing sort of create database and everything like this. It takes a few minutes, maybe about five minutes or something like that. And then it will, <coughs> in the end, become available in status. So that's what you want to get to when you um, before you proceed. 
and then also there's another thing that you want to do when you come back come back in here and go to the um, VPCM and that you've created then you have to come down here to security and security groups then you will have had this security group that you made and then what you have to do is go to I mean click this if it's not defaulted to it then go to the inbound rules then you will have you'll need to get one of these edit this down here and you might not have this yet so what you have to do is just um, create another rule add a rule here and then select from this MySQL Aurora and then over here the important thing is to uh, select my IP so this allows your IP address to come through and then once you do that this will change to be your IP and then save the rules down here click Save and then yeah just come back out so just cancel I'm just going to cancel that because I've done it already and that is all working correctly for me so now when you've got that working and you've got uh, the database working as well here then what you can do is you can install dbeaver which is what I have here dbeaver so the database for me is this one here business and that's what I've just created so the, you come over here and then you just create new database like this so this in the instance then you give it a, give it a name so what I've done is biz and then I've chosen it seems to go to this one Swedish so what I want to do is just change it to general and case insensitive so just change it to that and then click OK I'm not going to click OK because I already have it and then after that's created the blank database here called business then you can start using this kind of code here so I'm just going to drop the table for now so what you see is that I now have no table here nothing then here I'm going to use this bit of code here to create the table just to create one table and this is going to have a few of these um, these kinds of columns in it it's going to have ID because you always have an ID really and then you have a foreign key where some other table is going to connect into this and then you usually have some timestamps and dates maybe that's create time or update or something like this so I'm just going to call these date time one and date time two and then you have status you have some data really so we have a status here and a name and a description and all these other chars so that's the kind of fields that I've just created and if you look here let's see they're blank at the moment should be so there's one two three four five six seven of these now I'm going to do an, an insert just using any um, sort of test data that I have just created myself just some random data uh, rubbish data so what I have is an ID an incrementing ID over here and then I have uh, the foreign key the two dates and then some text here so if I just run this to insert into my table then that runs fine and now if I query it again we see we have these 10 rows so this is what I'm going to use to go through all of this whole process so basically if you look at dates one or these dates really um, all pretty much the same apart from when you get to row 5 you see this is on the 25th of April these the first five are on the 25th of April and then the next five from 6 to 10 they're on the 26th of April so the next day so the time is all the same so you see I've just generated this data myself and what I'm going to do is use this as a separator so uh, this up to here these five rows my plan this is my plan to, to do this kind of exercise these are going to be my 
um, initial loads. This is my initial load that I bring in, and that's just um, not going to go through some all through the fancy ETL. That's going to be a historic load, and then that I might do in a more direct way that will go straight from MySQL into Redshift. And that's what you do generally in these kinds of exercises. And then after that, you'll have your nightly ETL load that will pick up data that has been changed overnight. So this is what is going to be my range of new data that I will pick up in the next day. So I can sort of cut out for this range saying um, anything from a few days ago. So today's date minus five days or something like this. And then so that's what you'll do in practice, but we're just going through some theory here. So what I would do is probably just put another date range in here. So give me the ones that are uh, greater than the 25th or greater and or equal to the 26th or something like this. But you see, you'll see later when I write the SQL for both of these types of data loads that there's is quite straightforward and yeah it's going to be fun so see you in the next videos